It's time for the Josh Kirby on Sports Podcast. On this edition of the Josh Kirby on Sports Podcast, we have a unique segment for you called Grow the Sport. My conversation with Caleb Pearson inside the growing sport of disc golf. I hope you can stay tuned for another exciting episode coming up next. Connected. This is Dave Johnson, voice of the Washington Wizards. You have connected to the right place because you are listening to my man, Josh Kirby, on Sports Podcast. All righty, back with you. Another edition of the Josh Kirby on Sports Podcast. As always, we're part of the Mayo Please Podcast Network. Make sure you check out the Mayo Please on Instagram, Twitter, and all streaming platforms. That's one of the places you can find the Josh Kirby on Sports Podcast. TJKSP is sponsored by Route 11 Chips. Make sure you find a bag today inside your local Martins, Food Lion, and Giant stores. We're also sponsored by P. M plus reserves. Thanks as always to JR Beats official MPT Now Productions and Dave Johnson for all the support as well. Um, as we said in the intro, a very unique episode. And um a reason for that is, you know, this is a sp- slow time in sports, and it's great to cover more sports than just the NFL, NHL baseball and anything out like the major sports this is like an up-and-coming sport in frisbee golf disc golf whatever you want to call it but um uh somebody here with me who has dove full into the disc golf world it, i i think he's it was started as like just a hobby and then he just full-fledged sent himself into the disc golf world. That's Caleb Pearson. He joins me in studio. Um, We have a lot to talk about Josh, today. how are you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. good. It's so good to hear you podcast and go through that mouthful of an intro <laughs> with, with all the sponsorship. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Um, I try my best. Yeah, I... We could talk about disc golf here in a second. The PDGA season, specifically, Josh, is just getting started. Oh, yeah. Um, but I am much more familiar with podcasting still than I am with disc golf because I've been doing a bunch of different podcast projects for a while now. But I remember, I mean, how long have you been doing this podcast? <laughs> Do you remember when you started? Was it? Are, are you, you putting a, me on the spot here? I totally am. Are you? Oh. Is it? A, I feel like it was last fall you probably started. I'm or have almost, you been doing it for a while? I'm almost at two years, I think. Are you really? I'm. Okay. That's awesome. Be- That's because so cool what happened, man, we're going way back. I, I announced with your brother, I was like, hey, I want to start a podcast. We were on the streets of D.C., and I set uh, up a SoundCloud, but it just never happened. I just never had the I guess time it has to start. Been a while, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah, but then one day I was like, I'm actually going to start this. And I decided not to use SoundCloud because SoundCloud you had to pay or something. Well, ridiculous. Yeah, when I launched mine, there was a limit on the foot, the amount of minutes you. That's could use. not what I wanted. No, of course. Because not. if I'm gonna blast off like I have been, then you don't want <laughs> a right. limit cap on how much audio you can upload. So right. we're here now, and you know. <laughs> well, good. Yeah, I'm. I'm glad you were. A, willing to talk about disc golf, <laughs> and then B, that I was at a point where I feel like I could. Um, well, I mean, yeah, the, the, I want to branch off. That's yeah. one of the main reasons for me wanting to do this, because I don't necessarily want to talk about the four major pro sports all the time. Right. You know? Well, that's smart. And, and so here's where I'm at, Josh. Do you mind if I start talking a little bit about disc golf and where I'm at with it? Let's do go. You, do, you, do you have like a specific agenda or questions for me, or is it cool if I just start? Let, let, let's just see where this, this, this takes podcast, us. Man, okay? you, let's just see where to this takes us. Shut me up whenever you want. But 
Here, here's the thing. Basketball was invented with peaches and a basket, okay? <laughs> and I'm sure there was an element of looking at that activity and, and it progressing towards a, a, a worldwide popularity acceptance, the, the way that sport grew. And so for disc golf specifically, the PDGA, um, they've kind of embraced this hashtag grow the sport. Because beginning, and I want to say maybe mid-70s, um, it just started to be a leisurely activity. It's always been this park game you play. Yeah. And so for, for free, too. For free. And so for those of you that don't know, disc golf, um, often called frisbee golf, is not like ultimate frisbee in the sense that it's a huge lightweight disc that flies up in the air for a long time, but it's more sharp, heavily thrown, uh, expensive plastics, and it's played just like golf. Instead of a hole, it's a basket, mm -hmm. um, but the rules are the same, the etiquette's the same, the style is, is, is very similar, and so it's been awesome to play. And for me personally, I grew up not really around it until middle school, would try it and hated it, like just <laughs> trash, hated it. And I think like most people would when you put a different Frisbee in their hand and make just them do like all me. different stuff. Yeah, well, I remember my like first you. time. Oh, I, it was, I remember watching it, yeah. Um, <laughs> And so I was like, this is dumb. I, I, this is not what it's about. Mm -hmm. And so I wouldn't do it. And then, <coughs> excuse me, it wasn't until high school that my friends and I started going regularly. And we were just like, you know what? Let's just go until we're not terrible. And so by the time we were graduating and applying to colleges and stuff, we obviously had more free time on our hands and would just hang out after school, kind of cherishing the, the friendships before we all spread out all over the state of Virginia. And so we would just play, like just play, play, play. Um, and so then I graduated from college two years ago. So that was years and years ago now playing in high school, but didn't play much in college. There wasn't a lot in the way of courses or teams or availability of my time to play, but post-graduation, uh, moving back home and working here and kind of rooting a life here, um, I've started going out again and big time, like you big mentioned time. earlier, we're into it. Man. Dove deep. Uh, so the family's into it. Uh, my cousin who's newly eight years old is into it. Uh, and so it's been awesome to kind of come back around to to what grabbed my attention in high school, uh, and so I, I've I played in it's I, I, we're still in February it's leap day but my first two tournaments I've ever played in have been this past month um, ended up winning the recreational division of the second one I was in so it was a lot of fun um, but additionally I've been watching the the tournaments um, yeah. the, the first PDGA you know pro tour. Uh, tournament is happening now so you and i actually just got finished watching round three of four yeah of which was really interesting to see how how better these players are yeah. compared to just us playing recreational oh yeah for sure and and th they're playing you know a, a professional tier a tier event and they're shooting 30 40 under par so they're <laughs> they're beating the course at, at this point people that do it professionally are way better than courses are challenging oh yeah um so you, you have a high or what should i say a low scoring battle between these people but the reason i a love it and b wanted to come on the podcast and talk about it with you josh is, is because of that hashtag grow the sport it's so cool to see the the way people are starting to notice disc golf whether it's by accident whether it's just as a leisurely activity they can do or if they're thinking seriously about competing yeah. in it um because the so i don't uh, were you familiar with brody smith yeah, at but all, the even before disc I figured, golf. Well, I figured you were. He, I remember because GM Golf. Um, he's a golfer, ball golfer, yep. golf courses, doing challenges, all that stuff. I'd always see him with a group of friends. I'd binge watch his content. It's just so good, and he played with Brody Smith all the time. And then when I when I started getting into disc golf, and years later we kept playing and playing together. I was like. Wow, Brody Smith plays disc golf? I thought he was a ball golfer. But right. th he's pretty good. He's getting into it. But, you know, um, disc golf is one of those things where I started off like, wow, well, like this is just a leisurely sport. Like it's free. What's the big deal? But then down the road when we started playing more and more and more, you, your brother, like basically your whole family opened my eyes to see that it's much more than just a leisurely sport. There are pros and they are pretty darn good. But you, I, I think the reason why it's not 
like no, not a lot of people know mm-hmm. about it is because it's not televised. It's only sure. on YouTube. Yeah. And it's like like the question is, could it grow more if a television network picked up some disc golf tournaments? Right. And and I think it definitely would. I think it inherently would. Oh, yeah. Anything that gets televised is going to get more eyes on it. But I do like sort of the the grassroots effort, the slow buzz that has happened of disc golf players watching and loving the sport and as it's growing. So so an, an example of that is companies that make discs sponsor players. And so they, they are getting more and more sponsorships. They're getting ad times. They're partnering with YouTube channels. A lot of the disc golfers have YouTube channels t- to get I- additional income as well. Um, and so the disc golf season is basically a February to August kind of main stretch. And then there's you know all sorts of charity tournaments and otherwise. And so the majority of that time is, is you pursuing the sport in general. But the way I like it is it, it reminds me of a lot about um, skiing and the way I learned to ski was that easy to pick up. And then there's a huge gradient of skill that you can have. But Absolutely. But, but wherever you fall on that gradient, there will be somebody better than you. Unless you're Paul McBeth, he's the best in the world. But there will be there will be somebody better than you. There will be somebody equally skilled as you, and then there will be somebody worse than you or newer than you. I think is a much better word. And so, skiing was a was a huge process for me to learn, and now I love it, and I, I found my comfort zone. Disc golf is the same thing. You can go out to your park and throw it around, and and not take it too seriously, or you can, in a good way, take it seriously and really love to go out and play it. And so, for my family specifically, it's been huge. And and the way I tell people about you know why this, even my friend group, why this resurgence of disc golf. You know, I I don't see that friend group I grew up with anymore, but it's just social media connection. Yeah, and all of them are working like I am or starting families and I'm out here playing disc golf again. So it's kind of like, why is that happening? Not that it's a bad thing, but what led me to do that? And A, a it was family. Um, them getting into it, exposed to it, trying it out. You know, my dad wanting to exercise more and, and finding out that he can do that while he's running or jogging and throwing a Frisbee. Um, it's just a ton of fun for whoever you might be. And so Absolutely. even my brother and then his his girlfriend getting her own Frisbee and starting and, and there's just... <laughs> There's almost a huge demand for females to play disc golf because <laughs> none of them are doing it, and so it's it's just really fun. Um, but that's you and you mentioned this earlier. It's a huge ringer. It's a huge selling point. It's so cheap. Um, it's free. It's essentially Gas. free. Discs range from eight dollars to twenty dollars, and there are a bunch of different plastics, a bunch of different styles. It's it's way more intense than picking your favorite golf ball brand. There's a lot of different ways a frisbee flies. And it goes up in the air, does a bunch of cool, crazy stuff, and yeah. comes back down. But it's so free and easy to do once you do it. Um, and so that's been kind of the selling point for for me. Yeah, but uh, one of the things I want to talk about, like you sure. said, um, the discs, there are so many different plastics. And, it, like, I, I've been looking at different discs. I'm like, mm-hmm. which one do I choose? Which one is right for me? But in a sense... It's techni- It's like the same as picking a golf ball because golf balls do different stuff when it gets hit. So basically, right. frisbee golf and ball golf have a lot of similarities, like as in differences of how each disc right. or golf ball is played. Right. Oh, for sure. Well, it's funny you say that because you, you have an exclusively tomahawk drive with your frisbee where you throw it over your head vertically and it spins around and hey, slaps it works. on the ground. But Do you're not very good judge. at it. Uh, no, hey, I'm not judging. I'm just stating facts. Uh, <laughs> and, and you're good at it and it's fun to see. But yeah, there's a lot of different ways to throw. And so even, oh man, how many days ago was this? Two days ago, I, I put on a little bit of a disc golf clinic for some people who had never really tried it before. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, oh. And so it was so fun to teach them disc golf. And basically, y- you have to get a person to not be comfortable with the Frisbee you put in their hand. Because you put a, a disc in their hand, and they think, oh, okay, it's just like a Frisbee. So they lightly throw it, expecting it to flutter and come back down. And it's just it, that's not what the disc is designed for or anything like that. So it was cool because one of the guys that I was kind of teaching was like, I had no clue how much thought went into disc golf. Because you think you just... And I, I get it. I was I used to be that guy. Me too. That would see somebody throwing discs all the time in the park and be like, how boring is that? Play Ultimate Frisbee or do something else instead of what you're doing. But it, it, it is 
equal to going out and golfing or it is equal to to having a practice on a basketball court with headphones in or whatever it might be and when you realize how in-depth it is and how much there is to it of like no each disc is different each weight is different each type of plastic is different each basket is different each course is different. yeah it's the just, baskets it's crazy. too everything yeah um so it, it, for me to personally realize that is awesome because it's a healthy cheap way to spend my time and those are two very important things i think for for people to find is a, a healthy, inexpensive way to spend your time. So that's been huge. And then lastly, to almost build on the family component of, of what I've been talking about, to find Facebook pages where people in the area gather to, to play disc golf. Oh, yeah. there, there are putting leagues. There are tournaments. There are people connecting back and forth. Um, I've only played in two tournaments in the last m- my first two tournaments in the last month, and I've met a ton of cool people. So it's a very friendly community. Um, and I wasn't expecting that necessarily either because you see some guy alone in the park throwing a Frisbee or listening to music or, you know, whatever. Um, you don't realize the potential of the activity that he's doing, but there's very, there, there's very much a following, and it's awesome because this year specifically that whole grow the sport vibe and mantra is, is spreading everywhere. And so it's cool to get in almost on the ground floor maybe, so to speak, because yeah. I, I think it's only going to get more exciting. I, I, not often do sports get less exciting. Basketball never decreased in excitement. You, you uh-huh. have people aware of a sport, and then it's an option for them. They either like it or they don't. But nobody ever subtracts themselves from knowing about and being aware about an activity. So yeah. it's really cool to see it see it grow. Yeah. So would you play disc golf if they um, it was like a country club and you had to pay for it? Like a, a monthly fee for disc golf? No, just like every time you wanted to play. Oh, I see. Like, like a, a golf course. Per course. Uh, I would, but not as much. I, I, I would lean more into what I already do, which is I have my own personal basket. Um, I mean, you know, my family owns land. We're yeah. looking at putting up baskets and having a course anyway. Um, but that would be nice. Oh, I'm yeah. looking oh, dude, forward to setting that yeah, up. We're excited to brainstorm that, especially this summer once it stops being bitterly cold. I, I'd like um, to. But to, I'd to, like a, to get a, address your question, I would, and there's some disc golf courses that do have a $1, $2 fee or whatever. Some are private. Um, some are in neighborhoods where you like got to prove that you're legit to go play them. Um, but I love that it started in parks. I mean, it's it's so accessible. It's right there. Yeah. Um, and, and I think it's funny that the... Uh, I bet 2% of people that have ever seen a basket with a little colorful ring on top of it actually are even aware of what it is. Because disc golf baskets, are you see them all the time. There are so many homes and houses and parks and, um, yeah, busy areas that have this thing that so many people are like, what's that about? Oh, I guess some people like to throw things in it. It just looks like a different, like a playground for adults. Um, but it, it is one in, like, the best of ways. Yeah. yeah it's a lot of fun. Um, getting into it. As a family, the last five months has been hilarious because it's arguably the worst time of the year to get into it. Freezing cold, um, not a whole lot going on as far as the season. So to launch into the spring and summer, oh, we're, man. We're, dude, you know what I mean? Like every time we're, we're together, um, we're like, we can't wait till we can go out there three days a week instead of one. Oh, kind yeah. Of thing. So Day, uh, daylight savings, and then it yeah, will be that's dark. next Sunday. Oh yeah, um, we lose it. Wait, uh, that's lose. we lose an hour, so it's lighter longer. Yeah, and guess lighter what, longer. Dude? That's my birthday. Uh oh, how stupid is that? You know what that means? What? My birthday is twenty three hours long. <laughs> that's so stupid. You know how unfair oh, that is. Oh, he loses an so, hour of sleep. Yeah. So bake me. A, you got it. You uh, you're now tasked with making that up to me. Okay, you're All the first right. person I've ever told that. Although my mom probably knew because she looks at the calendar. But anyway, All right. uh, yeah, we're excited to get back out there, and there's just a lot of excitement, even personally for me, around the sport. If you ask anybody who's into disc golf, they're excited right now because live coverage is now a thing. You can stream and watch coverage like you can on TV. It just happens to be YouTube. Um, but also, my little brother Silas is in this, a Stamp Wars competition with InfiniteDiscs.com, and so he's selling discs and making logos on discs that we can now buy, and they'll be which sold, is amazing, sold by worldwide. The way. Yeah, and so that is huge to me. Like that is why I go out and play. Um, it, it's not about me trying to get the best score, although sometimes you 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 mentally have a bad attitude when you're not playing well. But just that's just like any other sport. That's me um, all the time. <laughs> but the, it's so fun to to watch my cousin make a thirty foot putt. It, it's so fun to go to a worldwide website and see my brother's name 
and his artwork on their on their front page. I think that's huge, and it costs us zero dollars to be a part of that. Um, not many other sports can say that at this point. You either have to know somebody, have to have a lot of money, or you had to have been playing it since you were three years old. And disc golf, not only is that impossible, but it's just not common. So, Yeah, a lot of great things about the world of disc golf, and it's just amazing to see how much potential this has to grow. And I, I feel like one day in the future it might – get to the top if if you know what i oh, mean yeah. there yeah well and i hope i hope it keeps growing um i would love for there to be more coverage especially as you said at the beginning of the podcast the downtime in sports right now um you know if we weren't talking about this you'd be milking some story about pitching practice in the mlb that's fine people love to cover it and talk yeah. about it but so many Sports personalities and commentators are already covering that, and it's the off season. Let's be honest; not there's not a whole lot happening, so that's why it's exciting, um, and, and that's why it's yeah, it's just been really good to to dive into it. And so even doing it now with you this weekend, I'm just like this is a perfect time to talk about disc golf because it's very present not only in my life but in the culture as well. Yeah, you and you go hard at it too. I remember like two, three weekends ago we went to two courses south. Harrisonburg and you, Stan. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that was did. fun. Yeah, we played Westover. Did lunch? No, did we do lunch after? I think we ate after. Yeah, after. it was a long day. It was a full day. Whew, yeah, man. we got up and and that's a commute. And so that's the other thing too is you find you find these parks, find where these courses are. Um, and there's an app called UDisc that's huge. I mean, it does everything from live scoring and and, and actual tournaments to to tracking your own scores, and it uses GPS and statistics and. You can become a PDGA member and play in tournaments and be eligible for, you know, payouts and prizes, and it's it's so welcoming. I, I've never experienced something as welcoming as as this sport. So it's just cool. Um, I'm not the kind of guy that's going to say like, oh, it's I, like I'm a Packers fan. I love football. I love watching the Super Bowl. I'm not going to try to p- make a sales pitch that disc golf is equal to or better than the National Football League. Obviously, it's a monstrosity. Baseball's America's sport. I get it. I'm not trying to say all of a sudden this other thing is now the best in the world, but it is not some hippie side story weird thing that happens in a park. It's just not. There are awesome people that are yeah. professional disc golfers. Uh, I'm 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 donating to a charity for my birthday through the like Facebook birthday fundraiser thing of of this couple that's professional disc golfers um, that lives on the West Coast, and they go into gym classes and teach disc golf. It's called You Play Disc Golf. You can look it up. Um, so there's U-Disc and You Play Disc Golf with the letter U. You can look either one of those up. But it's just so cool, man. Like, I'm watching this. I'm like, how great is this? It's free, it's cheap, and it's the cost-benefit analysis is huge. It costs so little, and it's so much fun. Uh, there aren't a lot of negative consequences of it. So. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, being a PDGA member, which you are, if I'm correct, yes. allows you to join the tournaments that are PDGA, correct? Yes, you are correct. So there are tournaments or you know, just kind of unofficial gatherings where people will go and play, and then there are tiered tournaments that are PDGA official. So there's pro to- pro. T- tour tournaments basically that are tele that are on youtube and you can watch and subscribe to and then there's a b and c tier events so the ones i play in are are b and c tier events it, it's you know and all you need to do is be a pdga member which is like a 50 dollar a year membership um, and what that does is cheapens the cost per tournament entry um, so you can still play in these tournaments if you're not a pdga member it just costs a little bit more um and you're eligible for payouts and prizes, but the coolest part is you get a number associated with you, and you can just track your stuff. Um, so, so if I Google my name now, my PDGA stuff pops up, and so it's interesting. Now I regularly Google myself just to get to my page because it shows me what tournaments I've already played in, where I placed in them, how many points I earned for placing in them, and it just tracks my experience with the game. Um, there aren't a whole lot of other sports that can that can do that for you, that have yeah. their own, that you know, I get a little PDGA card and a number. There's an element of social media to it as well uh-huh. that's really cool. And again, that's made better by Brody Smith because he is a special case where he already had millions of people following him and then he became a disc golfer. So like him or not, it's huge for the sport. 
Why? Because of hashtag grow the sport. How do you grow anything? Awareness. Awareness leads to action. Yeah. So getting people to see his YouTube channel and say like, what? Wait, so he's not throwing a big lightweight Frisbee with other people. He's actually trying to throw it in this basket. And, and one of his, one of my favorite quotes from him so far, um, and so I love Paul McBeth. He's my, my favorite player, number one in the world, and I just love him to death. And then Brody Smith as well. Brody says, I love disc golf because every single throw is a trick shot. That's literally it. You're trying to throw a Frisbee that flies a cool way at just the right distance and angle and, and speed and all that stuff. So it's really cool and fun to do. It's uh, Every throw is a trick shot. Yeah. Um, I've had my fair share of pretty interesting shots too. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you have. That's very true. Um, and so it, there, there's the, the whole culture of you don't want to lose a disc while you're out there. If you throw it in a water, like lake or a pond, if you lose it in I the thorns. <laughs> um, so many different courses have so many different elements to that. And, and then you can go out there and just mess around too. Uh, it's not like basketball or baseball or football where you really have to throw together a scrimmage or even rely on other people. Oh, yeah. Disc you golf, can you just can go, go out, out alone. And even uh, my brother, Joan, and his friend Ross, or they go, they'll go out alone and have a speaker and just it, – it's, it's, you're outdoors. It is such, again, such a good alternative. But there's also a billion different ways to play it. You can play doubles. You can play uh, just like golf, alternate shot, you know, bingo, bingo, manga, stuff like that. So it's it's an arcade game that can hold up its own as, as a legitimate sport event. Absolutely. So PDGA membership, with that membership you're in, you could technically – go pro if you wanted yeah, to. Yeah, and so I, I, I... I'm not saying you're good enough, but I mean, right. like, Yeah, you know. so so I can at any point uh, register for the pro tier in a tournament. I don't. I stay in recreational or... So I, I won the last tournament I was in, so I need to see how they rank me based on my points, based on my score, and then I might move up into intermediate or advanced, you know what I mean? So, but above that is pro... And so that is a monetary payout. You pay a little bit more to enter, but you win. You can earn winnings yeah. as a pro. And so, for example, the Memorial Championship in Scottsdale, Arizona, is happening right now. It all of, everyone's in it. The top 100 best disc golfers in the world of men and women are in it. Anybody can register for it if they have the money and if they got their slot in before registration closed. So you're gonna get clobbered, <laughs> but you could do it. Uh, and so it's really cool to see the way that all happens. And so especially if you're sponsored or you're, you have a company working for you, these guys are basically professional disc golfers by career. And that involves them doing tournaments seven, eight months out of the year. And then there's an off season. But the m most productive of these guys are having it. They're doing a YouTube channel or have another job or are, are sponsored by this company. And so they continue to sell discs or work on this or work on that. Um, a lot of people flare up and are super good in tournaments and then they go away, but it's really cool to see people that stick around and, and are, are good people just to follow in general. And so Paul Macbeth and his wife, Hannah, I mean, she went to Liberty here in Virginia. They, they both live here in Virginia now. So it's cool to see the legitimacy of the people behind the, the, the disc. Yeah. It's not like a, a an athlete that makes millions and millions. And no, like, no. Like and, you and go up to them and they're like bodyguard shoe them off. Yeah, no, absolutely not. All of these pro tournaments, again, grow the sport. The sport is still growing. Absolutely. When, when I say you're getting it on the ground floor, it doesn't mean you're the first to try it. It's been around for 35 plus years. But what I am saying is at any point you could wake up and if you're close enough to a tournament, go stand right next to them because they're just human and they're there and they're ju they just happen to be very, very good at throwing discs. So oh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, and you and I are going out tomorrow. We're playing oh, yeah. Two rounds. Can't so. wait for that. That's yeah. going to be a fun day. Yeah. So um, the different types of discs in plastics, Yeah. What what's the difference between all the yeah, different question. plastics, and um, what's the best way to find the one you like? Good question. You're such a good podcast host, Kirby. <laughs> I love you. Um, and it's cool because... I mean, you have quite a fo I mean, you, know, you have quite a following as far as your your sports representation in, in podcasting, especially in Northern Virginia, D.C. But there are a lot of people that don't know about disc golf. I, I am confident that a lot of people know a lot about score sports and don't know a single thing Absolutely. about disc golf. So absolutely, there are 
four main categories of, of discs. Okay, there's a, there's a distance driver, a control driver, a mid range, and a putter. And so that's going to change the thickness of the plastic. It's going to change the weight, and then the way it feels in your hand. And so the distance drivers are are heavier and slicker, and they'll glide through the air and cut through the air and do a bunch of crazy stuff. Uh-huh. And then the closer you get to basket, so distance to pin, um, the the frisbee is is going to tend to get like a little bit deeper on the inside so more of like a a deep dish kind of thing bigger rim on it and so it flies straighter because you're you're approaching a basket you're getting closer you don't need it to glide around trees or around a fairway anymore you're just trying to land it in the basket and so the best way to to do that is to understand that there are different brands to to those categories of discs they approach them different ways and so every disc will have numbers printed on it give or take. Um, different brands do it a different way. But either way, there's a scoring system or a numbering system per disc of some Yeah, sort. if you could go into that as well. Absolutely. And so, uh, and that's why Infinite Discs is just the greatest website to go to because they, they map it out and explain it for you and, and anybody can use it. Um, but there are different numbers. And so there's, um, there's speed, glide, turn, and fade, uh-huh. and basically those numbers. And I'm, I'm, br- if there, if there are any disc offers listening to this, they're gonna be like mad at me that I'm leaving things out. But I'm just gonna fly through it. Those numbers <laughs> are gonna range from super big to super small, and the ratio of distance between each other is is gonna change the flight of the disc. So. There's a disc called a Corvette, and so it's fun as a sport as well because you can collect these discs. They look super cool. Yeah. They're super different. You can pick any color you want, any style you want. For example, one of my favorites is called the Corvette. It's a 14, 6, neg 2, 2. That means uh, speed is a 14 out of 15, so it's huge, really fast. Um, 6 glide, glides quite a bit. Neg 2, which means turns one way, and then 2 means it's going to glide back the other way. So you're basically throwing it out as a long-distance driver, and if you're you're picturing watching it fly over a field, it's going to have a huge S turn, and and you'll see it react to its rating. Basically, you're going to see, oh, that's what that number does. And so there's a very clear way to throw that frisbee, get power on it. It's much different from tossing frisbee with your friend, but based on those numbers, you learn the disc, or you pick a different disc and adapt to a different shot. So that's, I mean, that's scratching the surface, but. Then you get down to a mid range, which is going to be like five five one one. Again, the numbers are going to get smaller to to say less is going to happen between that disc and the air around it. Um, does that kind of help you help yeah. a little bit? Yeah. So it's absolutely. And, and so the best and it's interesting because again, right now is such an incredible time to get into it, or at least be curious about it and look at it because Brody Smith is a famous guy who's athletic in general, but he didn't know anything about disc golf, so he went out. He learned this stuff from the ground up, from reading books, read through the manual, went out with Paul Macbeth, had the best, you know, Jedi mentor known to disc golf kind. <laughs> and he learned it. He he realized what happens. And so now he has something called the Brody Smith Starter Pack, which is going to give you one driver, one mid-range, one putter. And that's all through his sponsored company, Discraft, which happens to be my favorite company as well. But there are a bunch of different companies, and they all will say, like, here's a good beginner disc. Here's a good uh, advanced or intermediate play disc. And they all do very, very different things. So there's a lot of different ways to go about it and approach the sport. And it's especially fun to watch pros do it because they're rival companies sponsoring these guys. So they're using the disc of their of their company. And so it's cool to see how they, how they do that. Yeah, well, just like golf. Oh, yeah, golf exactly. sponsors. Yep. It, it's so much alike it is and, but and one's with a ball and a club and one's with an well, arm and, and that's what it, and a it, disc that's what's important to understand is if you have any questions about it you basically have to ask what would golf do because it is called disc golf or other people will call it frisbee golf which which is one of those things where it's like it's not wrong but it's not necessarily right because yeah. they're not frisbees they're actually uh-huh. discs but it is golf it plays like golf it feels like golf there's a golf culture to it it, but instead of taking three to six hours out on a course, you can literally do it in 30 minutes. Absolutely. For example, I live half a mile from Sharando. I go there. If I jog or like I'll, I'll, I'll low key casually play around while I'm running. I mean, it takes me 25 minutes to do a course. You're just going or you can do it. And so we average, you know, 45 minutes to an hour, depending on who loses a disc where. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're like, I'm, I'm well aware of that. But. It, again, it's free, it's cheap, it's quick, 
and it's fun no matter what level of play you're at. And to me, it's always great because, you, you know, I'm not that good, but it's always great. It gives me, like, a great feeling of happiness when I actually make... Isn't it rewarding? Like, it's yeah. fun. It's like yeah. when you make a great shot, Bang it's and like... chains, man. That sound goodness. of plastic hitting metal and it, and it <laughs> catches in the... It, again, it's a trick shot. And so it's it's not about coming across as this like, oh, yeah, like I'm a disc golfer now. But it's just realizing like, actually, guys, it's really fun. Oh, yeah. And there's not a whole lot of reasons you can't at least try it or uh-huh. have fun with it. Yeah. Um, and so even like shout out to my little cousin Carter because he – I love that he's throwing at eight years old. Why? Because not many people on planet Earth – start playing disc golf at that age he has a good throw too and so oh he's so good and people strangers are watching him play and then they feel pretty bad about themselves because they're you know 35 years old and are getting out driven by an eight-year-old but again (laughs) the the so the tiger woods complex right he's going to learn golf at two three years old so what does the golf world do well every dad that followed tiger woods in the 80s and 90s raises up their children and says go try this sport go be good at golf 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 basketball basketball baseball baseball get these scholarships do this stuff whereas i'm sitting there talking with my uncle like if you were ever serious about letting him continue to play disc golf yes it's like skiing and there's a huge gradient of skill but it's not like basketball or football in that it can be pretty quick for recognition does that make sense it it can be pretty easy for him to gain traction because it's not like there's a billion different professional discs. Yeah, absolutely. It's not like there's a lot of teams or a structure in place. The the as the sport grows, it develops. And so it's cool to see him embrace that. Um, especially cuz nobody's going to pressure anybody into you. Oh, go be a professional disc golfer. <laughs> no, I mean yeah. analyze y- your skills, you know, how has God gifted you? What what is what is God's ultimate plan for your life? But how can you also have fun yeah. while you're down here? Uh-huh. And it's an element of saying, okay, well, how much disc golf can I afford to play? How much should I play? And then again, Kirby, who can I play with? Because that's why it, it's so much fun. It's fun to play alone, but it's better to go with It's friends. fun to play alone, but guess when it's most fun to play alone? When? When you ace or have a very impressive shot, and then you immediately can't wait to tell somebody about it. That's like, why Just like you did. The, the reason, well, luckily there were witnesses there, okay? My dad and my uncle were there. But you didn't record it. It wasn't recorded, no. You didn't. Uh, but I had eyewitnesses, man. You you better believe me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I we'll do. talk about this after the show. You better believe me, Kirby. But anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, again, the community behind the sport. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, so what what do you think of the future of disc golf? Well, there's two ways to answer that. Uh, I think wonderful things about it and of it. I think highly of it. I think it'll be cool to see what happens from it. Um, and even right now, we're seeing a, a, a new era of players because there are a lot of people that are aging out um, that were pros or that. And, and again, yes, it's not a physically tough sport but it does require some physical stamina Uh and if you watch somebody professionally throw a disc their body is doing something that not a lot of bodies do yeah and they're using a lot of muscles that not a lot of people use so it's i don't know what what's going to come from it or what sort of uh symptoms or 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 problems might come of, of doing this thing but everything's looking up uh, is ultimately my answer to that question. I'm, I'm very excited to see what happens from it. And again, I mean, I I have found my career path. I am established in, in this town and will soon one day have a family. And so I'm not trying to dive into professional disc golf. But what I am trying to do is capitalize on that experience and that moment, you know, with my family, with my loved ones, with people that are around me. And it's a huge, safe alternative. I mean, I, I work at a church with youth kids. I mean, what... It went uh, Kirby. When I walk in there with a disc golf basket, whether they like it or hate it, they're watching and they're curious about what in the world is getting ready to happen. Oh yeah! And so it's just fun. Yeah. It, hey kid, see if you can make it in that. I bet you can't. <laughs> that is that is an immediate, one hundred percent foolproof way of getting an eighth grader's attention. Put a disc in their hands and say, "I bet you cannot make that in that basket." <laughs> and then if he does, you say, I bet you can't make it before he can. And then you're just, you're just watching people play this thing. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to have fun with it. Yeah, so absolutely. It'll be cool to see and, and to speak to the PDGA. I don't know what the future of it's going to hold. I know it's growing rapidly. They're getting more 
uh, members. And so the more members they get, the more money they have, the more they can allocate for the, these tournaments and yeah. stuff. There's more sponsorships. Um, they just launched a brand new subscription service like Disney Plus where you can watch coverage live. And then there's channels like Jomez Pro that are recording coverage and uploading it later with very high quality commentary from people that professionally play. Yeah. And again, that's what's awesome about it. These guys play the tournament, then they go back to their apartment or, or their hotel for wherever they're traveling, and then they're the ones that are commentating on it. So in my mind, it's the equivalent of, and again, people are going to disagree with me, but it would be like loving LeBron James and watching him play basketball so much, and then him saying, I'm going to go back home and, and do voiceover and show you what I was thinking and why I was playing this way. Because it, the sport's young. And that's not really normal for most other sports. No, you, you don't have get that. a team yep. of broadcasters right. from a network. Yep. But disc golf, and there's not really anything it, it, stopping you from like, hey, I want to do play by play of this disc golf tournament. Right. Exactly. You know, I that stuff I'm interested in in yeah. what I look at. Like when we were watching that tournament, I was right. like, Where where are, are these they? guys? Yeah. Like, is there a booth? Outside, like the Masters and Jim Nance, just right. saying hello, friends, right? But, exactly, or so something like that. Last year, what you and I were watching didn't exist. Now, Disc Golf Network has long. I mean, Disc Golf Network has existed for four days. <laughs> so, so what does the future hold? I think it, that's going to become common, and people are going to know what that is, especially in the world of disc golf. Um, right now, every disc golfer is trying it out, but you're a part of the change, which is so so cool. Um, it, it's yeah, it's it's very rewarding to be a part of. And again, you can be a huge part of it and be like me and you that sit on the couch and watch a tournament, or you can be like my mom and say, "Why are y'all sitting on the couch watching them throw circular plastic for five hours?" She thinks it's a little <laughs> silly, but she'll also go outside with us and walk the park while we're throwing discs. And if she sees us make one in from a long ways away, she's just as excited as we are, because the family's all happy. Mm -hmm. So, it's yeah, hugely rewarding. Yeah, so um, hypothetically, if mm -hmm. disc golf were to make it on national TV, where would you want to see it carried? You're talking by network? Yeah, network. Um, and would you want to see Joe Buck well, calling okay, disc so golf? This this question has a multi... There, there's, <laughs> so, <laughs> there's so many different ways. I, no to Joe Buck. I'll, I'll start there. How about that? <laughs> I do not like the way anything sounds out of his mouth. Um, do you like Joe Buck? I like him. No, you don't. I don't. I, be, I, I, hey, don't, hey, I like him. Kirby, just because you also commentate on sports doesn't mean you have I to do stick like up for him. him. I okay? do. No. I, uh, you probably hate him because of the amount of Packer games he's covered. Well, that's, neither, that's neither here nor there. Uh, <laughs> what was the original question? Oh, yeah. So, again, TV as itself is having a existential crisis. Um, we just got rid of DirecTV. Uh, nobody, it's becoming less and less of a thing. It's still a thing, Kirby. Yeah. It's just less and less of a thing. Uh -huh. So I don't think it should be on ESPN. Why? Because it never will. That's a pipe dream. That makes no sense. And it would ironically not help the sport, but the juxtaposition of it compared to everything else they cover will actually make it look silly and stupid. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what I think should happen, what I think is already happening is a disc golf network a disc golf channel. I don't think it should be a, oh, finally, CBS is covering disc golf. That will never, I don't I don't think that will ever happen. It might. There are a few stories on ESPN where Paul McBeth was on there because he shot 18 under at a very hard course. There are highlights, and they do, like, unique top 10 plays and unique shows and uh -huh. stuff. Yeah. But, again, I think it needs to have its own identity, its own mentality. You know, like, in my mind, um, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. You're the most excellent person to ask this, but... I think of basketball playoffs on TNT and TBS. Is that is that true? Do that does that happen? Yeah. Uh, uh, what NBA or March Madness? Uh, NBA. NBA playoffs on TNT and ESPN, I believe. And then and NBA like Network. CBS is covering March Madness and all that. They're, no, no, March Madness. Uh -huh. We're getting way off talking. Of Just it. yeah, but hang with March me. Madness is CBS, TBS. TNT, True TV, because the, of the True amount of games. Really? Okay. Well, yeah. well, I said CBS. Yeah, so but right. the amount okay. of games. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, point being, those sports are so established and covered across the board where those companies are like, okay, we need a sports anchor, right, or, or a sports host. And so disc golf is not like that. But again, there's buzz versus hype. 
Buzz says a lot of people are going to slowly start hearing about this sport, decide where they fit into it, and it's going to have a culture around it. It's going to have a niche. It's going to absolutely. Have, it's going to have its own little ecosystem, and then slowly grow from there. Versus hype, which says, "Let's make this thing big. Let's throw it up on ESPN. Let's do this, this, and this, and this." You get a huge spike, and then it's back down. Absolutely. Buzz versus hype, which is Kirby. You don't actually. You might know this. It's super ironic to use the word buzz. You know what I mean? Because that's the name of our favorite disc. Remember, <laughs> remember we yeah. talked about that. Yeah. Um, but I just got a disc named Buzz, and it was it, it's very it's nice fun. to throw with. Fun, very straight, stable mid range. Oh yeah, it's it's fun. Um, but yeah, I, I I think let Disc Golf Network be its own website. Let it have a YouTube channel, and let's see what the the audience engagement is. Because now statistics are not how many people tuned in during this hour, and it. it less and less reliability on revenue from commercials and more and more reliability on monthly subscriptions and engagement on social media. Absolutely. Clips. And so even today I was watching my Instagram stories and it was the players in between tees saying, hey, on so I'm watching live coverage and then right in between holes while they're walking, I look to my Instagram and they're like, hey, yeah, we're walking here in the park, blah, 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 blah. That's something you don't see anywhere else. That's something you can't see anywhere else. No. You can't. Professional sports no. don't allow it. So it's really awesome to see the leisure level still be there at the pro level. I, I was just about to say that. Well, good. I'm but glad. That means it's probably a good thing to say. Yeah. Um, so a lot of great disc golf talk. We're not finished yet. Okay. Let's fit in a quick break, and then we'll throw it over to Caleb to talk some tournament play because I have no clue who Sounds good. half these people are. but. <laughs> You know, uh, we'll throw it to a quick break, but when we return, Caleb will be talking tournament play. We'll be right back. The Josh Kirby on Sports Podcast, part of the Mayo Please Podcast Network, is sponsored by Route 11 Chips. Make sure you grab a bag today inside your local Martins, Food Lion, and Giant stores. And our new sponsor and fellow sports fans at PM Plus Reserves, providing reserve studies for homeowner and condominium associations in the Washington metropolitan area for the past 30 years. Make sure you check us out on all streaming platforms via the Mayo Please and the Josh Kirby on Sports podcast. You can also find the Josh Kirby on Sports podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, along with the Mayo Please on Twitter. Have any questions for the show? Feel free to shoot us an email at kirbyonsports at gmail.com. All right, welcome back. Um, back with Caleb Pearson, wonderful podcast co-host so far with me tonight, talking anything and everything disc golf on the Josh Kirby on Sports podcast. Um, Caleb, let's talk about some of the tournaments that have been going on, talk about some of the players to watch, um, everything that you know that you think myself and – the fans should know. I know, right? Enough of the touchy feely stuff. Let's get into the scores. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm assuming that's what you that's what you tend to do when you cover sports anyway. But okay, so the Memorial Championship is happening now, Kirby. Okay. Arguably the the first tournament of the season. And where is that the, held? The biggest. Scottsdale, Arizona. All right. All weekend long, Thursday to Sunday. Top forty percent of pros play into the fourth day. So you know, it's just again. What would golf do, right? That's the question we brought up earlier. Uh -huh. they would, there would be a cut. So the best of the best are now there. It's Eagle McMahon, Calvin Heimberg, Drew Gibson, Paul McBeth. Unfortunately, I'm naming Paul McBeth fourth instead of first because, your boy, he had a hard day. I'll be honest with you. Um, and Paul McBeth, as you said earlier, he's, he's five one time, of the best. five-time world champion. He is the best. From the state of Virginia, too. Yes. Um, originally from California, now lives here. Um, but his rating, again, we talked earlier, the PDGA rating and the way he plays in tournaments is, is better than anybody else score-wise. So he's regarded as number one. But, obviously, the pros are the pros. So he's actually down five strokes heading into the final round, which will be Tomorrow, you and I will be finishing up a disc golf round. I'll probably pull it up on my phone um, so we can watch coverage. But should be good. This is um, a, a tournament they've done before, but uh, a, a huge venue, super nice. They're celebrating the 50th year of the Memorial Championship. Uh, it, it's signature uh, iconic kind of picture or landmark is a huge fountain. You probably saw that today. When yeah. Watching. Huge big old fountain in the middle of this pond. So uh -huh. a lot of OB, a lot of water shots, a lot of hard um, mandatories that they have to throw their disc around and maneuver, but it's really cool to watch. They're celebrating their 50th year of that. They're also using two different courses. 
So Thursday and Friday they played one course. So now today was the first day of a new course, which I think is why Paul, you know, made some mental mistakes or struggled a little bit. But I mean, I love him to death, and it, it'll be it'll still be exciting to see what happens tomorrow. Mainly because the top three are all within one stroke of each other: Eagle McMahon, Calvin Heimberg, and Drew Gibson. Um, there are a few others that are a little bit lower on the scoreboard, but they're ranked top 10 normally. So they're not playing super well this tournament, but they're still doing uh, fairly well, like Garrett Gerthy, Simon Lazat, Simon, again, huge YouTuber, great guy. So it's cool to see see that happen. But again, watching it live is cool because you get to experience as they're kind of Absolutely. I, I also want to mention um, disc golf isn't just for males. There are a lot of pretty darn good females out there as well playing the disc golf in that same tournament if i'm correct do you think they're pretty is that why you is that why you said pretty much okay i'm just kidding i'm just kidding uh yeah so Paige pierce is is the number one female disc golf player with a Um, pretty nice putter mid-range yes she yes she came out with a new putter that's super awesome and so again we didn't talk about that earlier one of the things that happens in the sport is you get your own putter if you're good enough or your own disc line if you're good enough so paul Macbeth has his own series and style of putter um really fun to collect those and buy them and try them out especially if they're different plastic but Paige pierce is whooping everybody else on the female uh lead card she's five strokes ahead uh she's actually through hole 15 right now so they're still playing um they teed off later than than the men's pro open but yeah you have the mpo and the fpo um, and then the the best of the best are going at it. So it's fun. It's exciting. Uh, and, and that live coverage we watched today, by the way, you you probably saw it. It was kind of in and out of watching the, the, the guys finish up their round and then watching the girls start. In split screen and, and whatnot. And it's identical to as if we put a bunch of people with cameras out on Sharando's course. They, they, they pivot and they look over and they're like, oh, they're the girls teeing off. You know, I mean, it's the... The area taken up by a golf course is 10 times the area often taken up by a Frisbee golf course. Yeah. Because you can share fairways. You can, I mean, again, a basket and a tee. Um, and it, yeah, it's it's a lot more uh, compact and, and variable in a smaller space, which is cool. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what did you think? I mean, as, as good as it is to hear my take on watching a disc golf championship, maybe we should ask somebody who isn't currently <laughs> obsessed with the sport. I mean, what did you think sitting there watching it? Well, I... I thought to myself, man, these people are so much better than me. Like, I could go out there, attempt a throw like that, and it'd go up in the air and curve into the woods. (laughs) Tomahawk, 30 yards away from the tee box. Mm. Uh, I I wouldn't do good. So all the credit to those guys who perfect their craft to make it into the pro level and do what they love and – Try to win a tournament. And to speak to the the tournament happening now and also what we were talking about earlier, there's a huge mental component to professional disc golf. And when I realized that was when, I don't know if I was watching a YouTube video or reading something, but there was a a professional disc golfer um, complaining about an injury. And this was years ago. This was before Paul McBeth's serious life injury this past fall. But I remember thinking, okay, that's where I draw the line. If I'm going to hear a disc golfer complain about an injury while football <laughs> players are literally getting concussed 12 times a day and then, they are, and then they're just in an interview with like i'm fine you know it's like that's yeah. an injury i'm concerned about some disc golfer crying about arthritis is not that that's not concerning to me well it is because a you can jack up your muscles and then if there's a slight problem with your footing or your hand i mean you can't throw a frisbee but also there's a huge mental component to the game and i realized how much that can affect your play um, and how much you can be distracted or, or, or all that different stuff. So there's a lot of variables to it. Uh, and so I realized there's, there was more than meets the eye. And so today we saw that with a new course with a lot of the players struggling mentally. Yeah. For example, yesterday, <laughs> this isn't even a mental slip, but somebody kept clicking their camera in the middle of a guy's um, tee off. And so he like snapped at him because it was distracting to him. I mean, say, again, what would golf do? You don't talk in the middle of a backswing. That's no. how that's how you leave a golf tournament. Yeah, uh, not by choice, by force. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's the same thing. But again, Kirby, they're out in the middle of a public park, and so you do see dogs barking or hear them. You do see like a, a, a disc hit a flock of geese There's in round no one. There's no security. 
no, but it's fun. It's cool. It's like yeah. almost like we're not taking ourselves too, too seriously. This is going to be a nationwide, worldwide streamed sponsored event with a payout of $83,000 spread goodness. out across all the pros. But make no mistake, we are in a park surrounded by geese and children, and they're signing discs and high-fiving these pros right in between their shots. No, again, not even not even That's many awesome. golfers do that. You That's know what I mean? awesome. The golfers will a- after the end of a round do that, but in between, no way. Yeah. Um, Calvin Heimberg on the lead card, he he's throwing a disc off the tee, signed by everyone else he's playing with, and he said, "This is the first time I've ever really gotten to play with all of them. I just wanted their signature. I think they're awesome." <laughs> that's so cool, dude. Like that's that's what I would do. Yeah. I'd be like, hey, I don't really care if I beat you. I just really love you to sign this disc so I can go home and say yeah, I played with Paul McBeth. Like it that's awesome. There is less separation between the layman and the pro in the sport. Um and the scoreboard even reflects that because you, you have people relaxed. from different countries. You have people spiking up in the in the leaderboard. Um the top ten are within like five, six strokes of of first with it with one round to go, eighteen holes. So yeah, it'll yeah, be exciting. Yeah, so it's a lot more relaxed, oh, not like yeah. a professional athlete like LeBron James with a bodyguard and like no, he's not signing oh, that autograph. No, they're all they're all driving home in their sedans. They're all, you know, um mentally super duper into it. And that's what's cool about a professional disc golfer is they take it as seriously as somebody on an NBA team would take their sport, Absolutely. their job. Absolutely. Um, but the culture around it is super sweet. And so to go to tournament, like I'm going to a tournament called Two Days in May. Guess when the tournament is? Two Days in May? Yeah, I guess how long it is. Two days? Exactly. Yeah. So I'll be going to that tournament with my family, and it'll be super fun because the environment will be contagious. It'll be fun to watch and see how how this all goes Oh, is down. that the pro tournament? It's a pro tournament, yeah. Not a lot of them will be there. I don't think it's a a, a pro tour like a national tour big event but it is a tournament that again anybody can register for and a few pros will be there oh wait you're playing in no it? no oh, heavens, you're just no. watching paul mcbeth is playing and we're going to watch i i heard and that's because it's the only tournament in virginia he's i i playing. think i got an invite to that i wasn't sure you probably did i'll give it to you now you want to come yeah okay sounds good um if i can if i can swing it uh you can swing it bro you can sling it you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> I'll give you knuckles to that. Thank you. Why don't we do that? Um, but yeah, so it's it's really fun to watch them take the sport seriously because these guys are spearheading change. Paul McBeth is five time world champion. Why? Because he was the first person on planet Earth to get that good at disc golf. He raises the bar. He is dragging a, a, a field of players behind him skill wise. And what's happening? Well he would argue or some would argue now in this tournament he's five strokes behind these people are catching up there are people now grew up watching paul mcbeth that are now facing him so again that happens with every sport yeah so. absolutely yeah. so other tournaments coming up that you're watching yeah paying so attention it to? is not like other sports and that it's jam-packed every week every weekend um the memorial is happening now through march 1st is tomorrow the first? I guess yeah, it is. Yeah, tomorrow is huh? the And then first. the Waco Charity Open is March 12th through 14th in Texas. And then they go to Florida the following week. So so they're pretty spread it, out, it, like it, golf. It, it averages every week and a half, yeah. But again, there's always tournaments happening. For example, I'm in one or scheduled to be in one at the end of March at Sherando. It's a B-tier event, so there'll be like 80 people in it. Um, but yeah, it, it's all, the sport is everywhere. It's all over the place. And it literally, on the website, is divided up into tiers. And so you fit into these tiers. So even when my uncle and cousin were getting into it, I said, like, you guys could do tournaments. My uncle did his first tournament and loved it. Like, there are, again, there will be somebody worse than you. There will be somebody equal to you. Uh-huh. And there will be people better than you. Um, but they even allow, yeah, 10-plus-year-olds 10, 10 to play in, in kid divisions. And it's just fun. It's, it's welcoming. Yeah. So. It, it, it's a lot of fun. So, um, is there anything else you want to go over on um, tournaments wise? Anything we missed? Uh, no, not really. As far as professional disc golf is concerned, all I would say is just you can go to pdga.com or Google disc golf. You know what I mean? Find it on your own. Um, yeah, I, I can refer people to two things they can do. You know, go to Dick Sporting Goods, see the frisbees, check them out. Um, Dick Sporting and go Goods. to your park. Terrible, you know I mean? your, terrible choice. Why? They what's they, your, they don't what's have your problem. A, they don't have a disc golf collection. Okay, well that's a fair point. I mean, I don't shop there because it's exclusively my point, Innova, my, and I don't yeah. really like the discs. But 
for the lame and Kirby. Let's there's somebody listening to this podcast, ears perking. They already turned their car around and they're Googling the nearest Dick Sporting Goods to go get their first <laughs> disc. Okay. No, I think that's pretty cool. Also, shout out to IFO, incredible flying objects in Winchester, Virginia. I love you. <laughs> and then infinite discs. You buy them online. There, they come to your door. It's super priority uh, mail. Cohesive. Three dollars for priority mail extra. It's great. I mean, you're a UPS man. You you know what you're saying about that. Like whatever, yeah. I'll pay it. I don't care. But yeah. So this was a lot of fun. Thank you for having me on, dude. Uh, dude I, I, absolutely. Yeah, I love to see you. do We this. ranted for so long, but I mean, I I pretty much lost track of time. But this was so much fun. Yeah, it was. During that ad, I asked you how long we went. You're like, I have no clue. I said, Sweet. <laughs> That's how you know it's a good podcast, at least for the two of you, right? But, yeah. Yeah, Kirby, I love you. I love that you're doing this. I can see your passion for podcasting. It's super fun to be here. Um, thanks for having me on. Uh, keep slinging those discs. Yeah, keep slinging those discs, people. That's where we are going to end the podcast. Caleb, thanks so much for joining us to talk Frisbee golf, um, disc golf, excuse me. Um, Till the next episode, we're part of the Mayo Please Podcast Network. You can check them out on all streaming platforms and on Twitter and Instagram. We're sponsored by Route 11 Ships. Make sure you find a bag today inside your local Martin's Food Lion and Giant stores. We're also sponsored by PM Plus Reserves. Hey, if you haven't heard, we have a clothing brand out. You can check us out on teespring.com slash stores slash jk sports pod check us out buy some fresh swag there um till the next episode you can check us out on all streaming platforms all social media platforms via the josh kirby on sports podcast and the mayo please podcast network till the next episode we say so long and peace out